just thank you, worship team, for just for just leading us. Um, and, and what I say all the time is that worship doesn't stop when the music stops. Um, I, I just invite us, even in this time, to continue in worship because we, we worship God. That's just saying, hey, if we give you praise and honor by even the way that we listen, by the way that, that we engage with, with God's word, and and so we're just going to continue to to worship in this time. We're in a series called I. Am. It's, we're just taking a, a look at who Jesus says he is. Um, kind, of, kind of my burden for this series is that I've just engaged with a lot of individuals, a lot of people in our community, different things, and, and just, it's just found that, that in our culture today, there's a lot of people that know uh, things about who Jesus is, know, know facts about him, but don't know Jesus. Uh, and and you, the difference there, you even see it in Matthew chapter 7. Where Jesus says there will be many on that day that will come to me and say, hey, hey, Jesus, did we not say, Lord, Lord, did we not do many mighty works in your name? Did we not do uh, incredible things for you? And he says, depart from me, for I never knew you. That's a, that's a really scary verse. But, but the reality is that they knew a lot about him. They even did things for Jesus, but they didn't know him. And since I, I've been like like diving into that and, and been spending a, a lot of time there, like I'm seeing it in different things now. Uh, this past week, uh, my wife and I were watching the show. Well, well, I was watching it. She was asleep on the couch. Um, uh, but it was the show called Heist on Netflix. I'm a big true crime guy. That's a that's what I, was very interesting to me, and that's what this show is: reenactments of of true crime, but they say how stuff really happened. Um, a lot of details, and so she thought it was boring. I thought it was very interesting. But in this first episode, um, we're introduced to this uh, 21-year-old girl. She wasn't 21 at the time. Um, but we're introduced to her, and she says, yeah, I met this guy. He was in his 40s. Met him at, at this bar. And man, she said, I just, I just fell in love. The way he talked to me, and, and then we began a relationship. And man, it, we liked the same things. He liked to do poetry. He got me flowers. We liked the same food. Man, I, I knew so much about him, but what we find out is that one, one of the things about him is that, that 20 years earlier, he had robbed an armored truck. He had killed an individual and got out on early release from prison. And, and she, she even knew that, and she's like, man, I just... I'm going to ignore any warning signs and you just go all in. And they actually moved to Las Vegas where he convinced her to get a job with an armored truck where she began driving a certain route and, and, and one day he convinced her to, instead of picking up the guys that were supposed to be with her, to, to drive into a warehouse and them stealing $3 million back in 1993. And then from that moment, they, they fled the country with all this money. And, and, and it was just moments later that he said, you have to leave. I don't want anything to do with you. She, she, she leaves with their son and then lives the rest of her life scared about what could happen to her. Even so much so, she, she finally eventually comes back to the United States 12 years later, turns herself in, but then enters the witness protection after she serves jail time because she has no idea what this individual would do. And it's like, man, this just feels very weighty and heavy, but, but she just knew a whole lot of things about this guy, but she didn't know him. And I, I, I just felt that as I was, I was, I was watching that and, Experiencing that, I was like, man, there's something important going on here. The, the difference in knowing about and knowing. Having a head knowledge, but, but actually knowing that their hearts, their desires, what, what they long for. And, and that, that's, that's our desire in this, story, this series. Uh, I have this phrase that I'm, I'm probably going to put up before every sermon in the series. Um, that, that this is kind of our, our goal is that we must look beyond all Jesus did and behold all who Jesus was. That's why our goal says is just to look beyond all that Jesus did, because he did some incredible stuff. But we, our, our goal is to see who Jesus was. And so we're going to be in John chapter 6 
today, John chapter 6, we're going to read verses 25 through 35, and, and really dig into those, uh, those verses. But before we get there, I want us to, to talk a little bit about what has happened up to this point. Uh, the book of John is just one gospel, it's just one book of Jesus' life out of four. And uh, we, we see several events that have happened before we get to John 6. The very first thing, we have the, the wedding at Cana. What happened here is that uh, the wine had ran out at the wedding. Jesus' mom comes to Jesus and says, hey, you got to do something. And he turns water into wine. Now, that has to be the coolest party trick in all the world. Right? Like, like what if you have the ability to turn, like, broccoli into nachos? I mean, wouldn't that just be incredible? <laughs> Especially if it had the same nutritional facts as broccoli. Anyway, so, so, so that's the first miracle we, we see in Jesus uh, in the wedding in Cana. But, but the majority of the book of John it focuses on his last year of ministry. He did three years of ministry on earth. He focused on the, on the last year of that ministry. So just some of the things that we see highlighted in John uh, is that he heals the official, an official son. He heals a lame man at, at this pool that had been lame uh, for, for 20 years. Couldn't walk, couldn't move on his own. And then earlier in John 6, he feeds 5,000 people. Uh, 5,000 plus people with what I like to call a lunchable. It was a couple of fish and some bread. And he multiplied to feed 5,000 people. And these 5,000 people were excited. They're like, look, look, we're bought in, Jesus. We'll do whatever you want. And so he does what nobody would ever do today. He's, he sees the, the large crowd and sees how excited they are. And he says, hey, I'm out. I'm, ju I'm just leaving. I'm not telling anybody where I'm going. He didn't even tell his closest individuals, his disciples. And so his disciples are confused. They're like, I guess let's go across the sea to Capernaum. Maybe Jesus is there. We don't know. And so they begin sailing across the sea, and it gets uh, night. They're about halfway there, and a storm comes up. These guys are, are, are scared. They're confused. They don't know where Jesus is. Then all of a sudden, Jesus, amidst the storm, comes walking up. Wouldn't that be a sight? He comes walking up and says, hey, you looking for me? And he enters into the boat, and it says they, they gladly accepted him. right? Because it, now they had nothing to fear because Jesus was with them, and then they get to Capernaum. And then that's where the story picks up that I want us to, to focus, focus on in verse 25. All that has happened up to this point. And, and so they got to Capernaum, and now the crowd has found Jesus, and it says, when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him, God the Father has set his seal then they said to him, what must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent. So they said to them, then what signs do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread until uh, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, it was not, it was not Moses who gave you the bread, but my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Whoever believes in me shall not Thirst. Let us pray one more time. Lord, I, I just pray that you just give us wisdom in this passage. James 1, you tell us that, that when we ask for wisdom, you, you give it. And Lord, we're, we're just trusting you. Lord, I, I pray that, that we would see you more clearly because of this passage. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So there, there's a lot going on in this passage. Um, and there's a few things that, that I really want us to, to, to point out. The first thing uh, that, that you just see with this mob, and we see it even today, is that we get distracted by the urgent. We get distracted by the urgent. 
And, and here's what, what I mean by that. that this mom has just seen Jesus multiply this food to feed thousands of people. They've, they've seen or at least heard about him literally healing people. They've seen or at least heard about him uh, turning water into wine and doing all these miraculous things. And, 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 and what they show up and say, hey, we need more bread. We need more bread. In, in the passage, it, it, it focuses on um, th th this first part where Jesus is pointing out. He says, hey, you ate your fill of the loaves, and, and do not work for food that perishes. He says, hey, hey, you already ate your fill, but now you're coming back for more. Because that's exactly what we do when we see whatever is urgent in our life, and, and we make that the most important. Again, uh, going back to, to, to media in the world, one of my favorite movies uh, is the movie Castaway. Anybody seen it? Yes, uh, it's a classic. Uh, it's one of my favorite movies, not because Castaway is one of my, I mean, not because Tom Hanks is one of my favorite actors. It's one of my favorite movies because I always dreamed that that could happen to me. I've always, in my whole life, like since I was in fifth grade and read the book Hatchet, if you ever heard of it, dreamed of being trapped on a desert island or a deserted island and, and having to, to figure it out myself. So I was like, man, this is a reality. I would do this different. I would, I would have done that. But uh, what, what we see in that movie is that immediately he, he, he crashes the plane and then he washes up on the shore of this island. And, and there's things that he immediately needs, right? He's got to figure out food, water, shelter. Like, like he needs those to survive. And so he, he goes to work and he, he's even got to get fire and he, he's working on all these things. And he actually becomes uh, pretty successful. He, there's one scene where he finally uh, catches a fish, and it's like he's won the World Series. Like, he's, he's just the most excited he's ever been. Right? That's, that's how we would have been in that moment. But, but what, what could have happened is he could have just continually focused on his, his urgent needs every single day. And the movie would have ended... Uh, much more sad than it did because he, he would have maybe got uh, even better food. He maybe would have even figured out like some kind of spices or something on the island. He may have even got a better shelter, like maybe he got a second story or something. But the reality is if he, if he only focused on the urgent and, and what, what satisfied him in the moment, then he probably would have never got off the island. Because he, he realized, hey, hey, uh, just satisfying my urgent need, my need in this moment, is not going to uh, uh, save me long term. And so he begins building a raft, and he, he, he makes all the rope he could possibly make on the island, and he uses every resource he has. He even expends some of the urgent for the significant. But far too often, we, we get distracted by the urgent. And we think that's what matters most, but, but, but more importantly, God cares about the significant. We get distracted by the urgent, but God cares about the significant. And we see this in this passage. One of the things that, that's very interesting to me is if you study the, the, the Greek, that's what the New Testament was written in, it communicated language far better than we can today. In, in a lot of ways. And one of those ways, right, we, we see in, in our language today, we just have the word love. And we use it a lot of different ways. Right? I love nachos. We'll go back to earlier. And I love my wife. I, I don't love them the same, but we, we, we only have one word for that. Well, in the Greek, they have four words for love. Right? To, to, to differently express what they're feeling, what they're talking about. And, and that's also true with the word life. Because Jesus comes on the scene and, and he keeps saying, hey, uh, I, I am the bread of life. And there's two different words for life in the Greek. First, we have bios. It's physical life. Right? It's, 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 it's just living. Just the physical life. And that's what, what they would have assumed when, when Jesus said, hey, the bread of life, they would have expected him to say uh, the, the bread of bios. Right? That he, he, he's the bread that just sustains us, that fills us for a moment. But the, the word that he uses is zoe. It's the absolute fullness of life. 
uh, even speaks to eternal life. When Zoe is used in scripture, it, it, it goes far beyond just your, your momentary fulfillment. And it talks about eternal significance. Here's, here's why this is so important, because um, they're communicating, hey, uh, we've seen all that you can do. We want some more of that. And he said, hey, hey, the reality is I could give you more bread. I could do like Moses, and for 40 years you could get bread every single day. But that's only going to satisfy your bios need. And that, that's our, our pro their problem then, and our problem even today, is that we're trying to satisfy a Zoe need with a, with a bios reality. Man, when, when, I, when I was just looking at that, that just weighed just so, so heavy on me. Because how often do we get distracted by the, the urgent when, when God says, hey, I care about the significance. Right? It's, it's easy for them to think about that and, and their time, times were, were different. They couldn't just go to McDonald's and, and get their next meal. They didn't have markets and things. They didn't have refrigeration. Right? Things were, were a lot harder. But, but how often does, does our prayers or our, our wants, our desires in our life look like, hey, I, I just need to make it to payday. Or, I just need length to happen tomorrow. I, I just need uh, the doctor to say this. I need this today. I need it right now. And God cares about those things, but he says, hey, I got something even more for you. Even bigger than just those things. But what, what's, what's tough is, just like the passage, even though Jesus communicated that, like, like so well, and he says, hey, hey y'all are working on bread that wastes away. Right, food that perishes. But you need to be about the food that endures to eternal life. Right, he, he, he points that out, but they still don't get it. Because what, what's, what's humorous to me is in, in, in verse 30, they say, hey, you, you talked about, uh, or you gave us the bread, what other sign can you do? They, they want to see what else they can get from God. What else they could get for, from Jesus? In verse 30, it says, So they said to him, uh, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What works do you perform? <coughs> like, he's already done all that he needed to do. Right? If you're not going to believe at this point, you're probably not going to believe. You, you, you've seen, you've heard about me healing people, bringing people from the dead. I, I just had this insane miracle you just saw a day ago. And they said, Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what else can you do? I mean, Moses did it for 40 years. I mean, he just did it like one time. Because the, the reality is, even though we get distracted by the urge and God cares about the significant, the world makes us more hungry. But even when we satisfy the, the urgent, right, when, when the hungriest you've ever been in your life, and you satisfy that hunger, what's always going to happen? You're going to get hungry again. Like it's inevitable. I was thinking about this. That there's, there's things that I have currently that at other points in my life, I was like, man, if only I had an iPhone. Then I'd be happy. I'd be satisfied. I could do all these things. If only if I had a house of my own, I'd be happy. I'd be satisfied. I could do all these things. And so it's like now I have them, and, but instead of being satisfied, my longing being satisfied, I'm looking to the next thing. Right? Instead of being, being happy with, with our, our home, we're thinking about, man, wouldn't it be cool to have a pool? Especially when it's six million degrees outside. Like, oh man, we just got a new vehicle. But wouldn't it be cool to have a new one? Is this missing this feature or? Because that's what happens when, when we get all the things in this world that we think are going to satisfy us, and they never do. And it's not just things. That often it's even relationships. I remember my, my 
myself in high school. Man, if I could just get this one girl to go on a date with me, then I'll finally be happy. I'll finally be satisfied. I'll have it all figured out. That relationship ended in depression and so on. Because just like these individuals, we're looking to fulfill a Zoe need with a bio. That, that, that they still never even grasp because at the end of the story uh, later even after what we read it says the crowd walked away the disciples were still there so the, the, the crowd went from 5,000 to 12 but the reality is is that Jesus always satisfies Jesus always satisfies I want us to look at, at verse 33 through 35 again um to just really bring this out more, where Jesus is, is really hammering this down. He says, For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Again, they were looking for the bias, right? Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. And th this reality makes such in our lives. And, and it, it, it really just reminds me of this, this clear picture that I, that I think just illustrates this well. It's something called the, the three circles. Uh, this has just been something that's been shared with me. It's just a helpful tool that I think just really shows what's going on in this passage is that, that, that God had a design for his world. We see that in Genesis chapter 1. That he, he, he created everything in the beginning. But not just he created everything, he created Adam and Eve, the, the first individuals on earth, and then in the afternoons he, he walked with them. Right? Because in, in God's design, it was to have a, a perfect relationship with his creation and him. What happened is that, that sin was brought into the world in Genesis 3. Sin just means you missed the mark. You try to do it on your own. You say, hey God, I don't need you. And sin was brought into the world. And what happened with sin is it led to brokenness. Broken is from Genesis 3 that, that we feel the effects of even today. The, the weight of brokenness in our life. And we all experience it in different levels of it, but we all experience brokenness. But what happens is we try to satisfy our brokenness. That's what these represents. We try to satisfy it with, with maybe with relationships. Maybe it's with alcohol or drugs or Maybe it's with money or success at a job. But every one of those things that we, we try to satisfy our brokenness with, they, they never satisfy. Just like them. Say, hey, 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 we can solve all of our problems if we just have bread every day. And even if that would have happened, it wouldn't have fixed the brokenness. Right? It's, it's like fixing the symptoms but not the problem. Like, man, I, I have this disease. It's like, well, I can, I can do something to, to take away your headaches. But you still have the disease. Like, no, 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 let's fix the disease and not just the symptom. That's what we, what we tried to do. But, but, but God loved us so much that, that he had a remedy. And it's the gospel. The gospel is just that, that Jesus loved you so much, loved us so much, that he didn't want us to stay in our brokenness. He didn't want us to stay in our sin, but he, he came to, to earth to die for our sin, to die for our brokenness and our mistakes. Just so that all we had to do was repent and believe in the gospel. That means, hey, we're, we're, we're turning away from doing our own, and we're trusting all that Jesus did. And it's then, and only then, that we can begin to recover and pursue God's design. That we, we can begin to, to have that perfect relationship again with the Father. That's what, what God desires for, for your life today. It's what he desired for them 2,000 years ago. Yeah, hey, hey, there's more. It's an everlasting life. There, there's more to life than, than bread. And he says to us today, there, there's more to life than, than worldly success, than, than having kids, than whatever it may be. He says that, that, that you may have with God. 
And so that's what, what he invited us um, into in this story. And that's what, what I invite us into as well, is to, to instead of just trying to be satisfied on the things of this world and being satisfied in Jesus. So what, what I want us to do in the next moment, I'm going to have Vanessa come up. She's going to uh, just play a song over us in this time. You don't, you don't have to sing along. I'll be a song that we've, we've already done, but it's just going to be a time of, of just spending time with the Lord. Maybe you just ask a question. Hey, what, what am I trying to satisfy myself with in this world? What, what, what thing or things am I trying to, to fix my problems or fix my brokenness? Maybe you spend this time saying, Lord Jesus, I need you.